What are the major technology shifts that are challenging telco customers today? Joining me from Boston to discuss the issues is Stephanie Chiras, VP and General Manager of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux Business Unit. Stephanie, good to see you again. Good to see you too, Guy. How can Red Hat, together with its partners, best meet these evolving requirements? I think it's an incredible time right now as you see the excitement. Everything is about speed. And when you want to deliver innovation at speed, it's about pulling together a community who can all contribute to that. I mean, that's how open source was born. And that's what we believe our ecosystem is built upon Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It's about pulling together the best innovators. When you look at the speed that folks want to deliver in the telecom space now about new services, it's all about how I get applications up, deployed, faster, more agile, and containerization is driving that. So there's a huge focus on how applications are built, how they're deployed. But really, you need a foundation underneath that's going to allow you to do all of that. So the decisions you make in that foundational layer are really strategic. And that's where we get to the operating system. And with the recent announcement of Red Hat's Enterprise Linux 8, what is the specific relevance to telecommunications service providers and their related partner ecosystem? Well, telecom, they really need to deploy services faster, but within regulatory requirements. So making sure as they bring new capabilities to the table, but it's being built upon a stable and secure foundation, that's really key. So we look at when we launched Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, we really pulled in our ecosystem to make sure that the ecosystem was right there with us, building upon that foundation, so that the capabilities that our partners brought to the table built upon what we put into Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8. Now, we did put a whole lot of features, both to help companies run better and help them consume innovation faster in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, right? Things like insights and the capability to do automation and management directly in the operating system, pulling in things like application streams to pull in new user space packages much, much faster. So all of those features are, are in there, but really we focused on making sure that the ecosystem was ready. And it is, it's all about the ecosystem and making sure that we pull together a comprehensive capability. And how has the ecosystem influenced the current release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux? As all things in an open source world, we wanted to pull them in early and often. We released a beta back in November of 2018, and we had over 40,000 downloads of that beta prior to releasing with the GA version in May of 2019. So we got a lot of feedback, and, and we worked really hard to make sure we were pulling in that feedback and updating and making sure we were pulling in. And the telecom industry and our um, NEP providers, they were very vocal in pulling that in. We see that as a win. That's how we continue to evolve. So with our, our real vision that we're upstream, we want all of that, we encourage, right? We want all of our ecosystem to be participating upstream. We want to advocate for the features and functions that they need upstream, but that's where the innovation begins. And then we all pull it together, right? As a collaborative community to deliver value to the telcos. So Stephanie, can you tell us why Red Hat's partner community can directly benefit from the growing rail economy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is part of a growing and self-sustaining community. Like, like all good communities, they continue to grow and they continue to flourish. And it's building upon what's already been done and making sure that there's a, there's a way to contribute and to continue to grow it. So we did have a study done to look at, with an analyst group, to look at what, what is the value today around the economy of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And the ecosystem built on Red Hat Enterprise Linux by the end of this year will be about an $80 billion market. That's huge. And for every dollar that Red Hat gains, there's about $22 of value that's created and generated. And that's what's available today. Our goal in partnership with the ecosystem is how do we continue to grow that and make it flourish? So, you know, today we have 
roughly about 130 um, CCSP cloud service provider partners signed up as part of our program. We have over 4,600 servers that are certified with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, over 5,000 ISVs and third-party applications. All of that comes together to be the beginnings of this ecosystem, but boy, we have a long way to go as this market continues to grow. We've really focused hard on a few key ISVs to make sure that we do super deep integration. So as applications come in and sit on top, they can continue to grow. You know, things like SAP, things like Microsoft and SQL Server. We have worked very deeply to make sure those are integrated in. So applications that feed in and pull off of those, right, they have a stable foundation to work off of. So we do see this as how do we help and work with the ecosystem to make sure that we continue to grow. We listen very closely to our developers for what they need. How do we bring in right into the operating system new capabilities and functions so that they can get access to the next innovation? We did something in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 that actually got great traction with the press was something called application streams. We separated out the flow of the kernel and the updates there from the updates that can be done in the user space. So as some things that get updated much faster in the user space, you can actually pull those in in a much more rapid and iterative way while maintaining a stable kernel underneath. It's things like this that we wanna make sure we hear from folks and we pull that in and build upon it. And when your partners look at the value unlocked by taking advantage of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, what are some of the key things that they can look forward to? So Red Hat Enterprise Linux is really the start. What we're seeing all over is that telecoms are in this incredible point of transformation as they move to digital service providers. So while Red Hat Enterprise Linux is that foundation, it's that stable, it enables them to be able to be ready to consume the innovation tomorrow. As we look at how the partners interact with us and how they help their telecom customers continue to evolve and transform, it's about starting that journey now and being prepared to build in innovation going forward. It's exactly how we look at our portfolio, at how we look at Red Hat Enterprise Linux feeding into OpenStack and being, again, the foundation for OpenShift. So as any telecom wants to deploy bare metal virtual machines on RHEL, they can get that same ecosystem, that same Linux experience when they wanted to do it in an orchestrated containerized environment, leveraging OpenShift. And we continue to evolve this. We've released universal base image to make sure that we are putting user space packages out there that are ready for development, ready to be redeployed within containers and ready to run on RHEL and OpenShift and pull in all the value that we've built in. So when considering the choice of community versions of Linux against Red Hat Enterprise Linux, what's your guidance to partners and their customers around the advantages of choosing the leading commercial distribution of Linux, RHEL? I really think this comes down to clearly we believe in open source. We believe in having those bits available. But when you look at the industry today, there's, there's over 2 million open source projects being done in the industry today. What we have done is we have pulled out what we believe are roughly the 3,000 core that are critical to run a business and to make sure we're able to pull in new innovation, but it's stable, it's secure. We've pulled that into Red Hat Enterprise Linux and we've tested it from bottom to top. Not only within those 3,000 packages, but with all the ecosystem partners from hardware vendors and chip processor vendors, all the way out to applications and ISVs. So we have built that already to make sure that there's an ecosystem of portability because really what customers want is they want to then, they want to build upon the ecosystem that's already been tested, is trusted, is secure. It's about then how can a customer come in, they can do development once, 
but then they can deploy it anywhere within that ecosystem. And when I mean anywhere, I mean anywhere across all those different hardware vendors. It could be on public cloud. It could be in the data center, be in the core network. It could be out to edge. It can leverage the entire ecosystem that is built upon Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So it's, it's building upon making sure our ecosystem is all working together to make the right decisions for what innovation we pull in we test it, we work together on behalf of the customers to provide an ecosystem that is trusted and stable. And then it's how do we work with our customers to take them to the next, to the next great technology that is gonna come down the pipe. Stephanie, thanks so much for joining us today, thank you. My pleasure, thank you.